Welcome to the video. In this video we're going to talk a little bit about the different types of connection there are between the receiver and the control flight board or servos or ESCs that are in your remote control model. There's a little bit of confusion about the four common types and the four common types are typically called PWM, PPM, or sometimes also called CPPM, the SBUS system and also satellite receivers. So what I wanted to do was go through each of these in turn and let you know what they all do because I've had a number of questions from subscribers who are a little bit confused so in this video I'm hopefully get rid of some of that confusion and make it a little bit clearer for everybody. Now what we're going to do is actually use this as part of our CC3D series. If you haven't been watching that, I'll put a link to it in the description at the bottom. That's where we're actually building a craft from scratch and we've actually put it together with the first of the options that are on the screen now, PWM. So these are the four options that as part of the installation of Open Pilot onto a CC3D flight controller, you have the option of. And this is kind of the grand set. Lots of other flight controllers allow you to have connections using either PWM, PPM, Futaba, and some of the latest ones also allow you to have a Spectrum satellite receiver connection as well. So what I'll do is I'll go through each of these in turns, we'll talk about the good stuff, we'll talk about the bad stuff, and I'll give you the highlights of what each one does. So the first one we'll talk about is one that's available on both of these receivers. You'll see that on these receivers there are lots of sets of three pins, and each of them correspond to a single channel. That's what PWM is. You'll have seen it used a lot on the channel and it's where you connect a servo cable into each of the individual connections and then put the other end of the servo cable into the relevant input in the craft. So let's have a look at PWM. It stands for Pulse Width Modulation and the way it works we cover in a little bit more detail in introduction to radio control. I'll put a link to that at the bottom of this video. But simply put, there is a little pulse that comes down the servo cable and that pulse width dictates how much of a control there is. From a thousand microseconds, which is the low end, to two thousand microseconds, which is the high end. So occasionally you'll be setting up a flight controller or a board and you'll see these numbers uh, 1060, 1500 being the middle channel value, 1980 being the top value. What it's actually talking about is the width of that pulse. Pulse width modulation has been around for a very, very long time. Pretty much everything supports it. So unless you're buying something to specifically support technology like SBUS, then it'll plug in and work fine with a PWM receiver. Pulse width modulation works brilliantly on craft that don't have a flight controller, so things like flying wings and planes where you don't want a NASA 32, CC3D, APM, Pixhawk or whatever in the middle as a brain. You can just plug the servos and the speed controllers directly into the cables and pins on the receiver itself. So the elevator servo will plug into the elevator channel, the aileron servo will plug into the aileron channel, the ESC and motor will plug into the throttle channel. So it's a very versatile system. There is one channel for every wire and that's the way it was originally made so that you could connect all of the servos and ESCs together. That means that um, it can get a little bit complicated. So the good stuff is because it is the original everything is really cheap as chips and if you have um, servos or if you have speed controllers then the chances are that they will talk PWM by default. Downside is when you put these things on a model, and you'll have seen these in a couple of videos, you end up having to have six or seven wires going from the receiver to the flight controller. And that is not a problem, but it does mean that you have a bundle of wires that you have to manage. And in a couple of my videos, I've talked through the tricks that I use to keep track of which wire is which to make sure it all works. The next one we'll talk about then is PPM. So PPM is a way to send all of the channels that we get out of PWM down a single servo cable. 
So on this R615X receiver, I can either plug a cable into each of the channels, or I can plug the cable into the battery bind port. Make sure I've got this right way around, signal on the top. And now all of the channels are coming out of this one single wire and just by connecting the other end into my flight controller and telling the flight controller that it is a PPM connection, all of the channels will appear at the other end magically. The way it works is that it sends the positions of each of the channels in turn down the wire one after the other in little 20 millisecond frames and those frames are received by the flight controller and then it reads off the individual levels of all of the connections. Great thing with this is a piece of cake to set up. If you have a receiver that understands PPM then you can connect one single wire into the flight controller, tell it that it's PPM and you're done. Downside is it obviously needs to plug into something that understands PPM, so it has to be a flight controller. You can't plug it into a speed controller and you can't plug it into a servo directly because those devices typically talk PWM, but to get all of your control inputs out of your receiver into the flight controller in one wire, this is a great way to do it. Sometimes have problems with this with something called channel mapping because not all PPM receivers send the channels in the same order and sometimes that means on the flight controller that you do have to select the model that you're using. So there are a couple of different variants and on a couple of videos that we've done in the channel you pick the right one or you can change the order of the channels because it might mean that the things like the gear and auxiliary one channels might be swapped around. Not a disaster, just one more thing you have to think of. So that's PPM. So different from PWM, um, on these things like the R615Xs, I use these things a lot. The cool thing is, is not only do we get the PPM signal out of the battery bind uh, connection so that we can uh, sort ourselves out, the other pins still output the PWM signals. So if I want to put in things in here for stuff like landing gear or uh, external lights or things like a camera shutter, then I can still plug another cable into one of these other connections too. So it's a really, really versatile way to connect up your system. Next one we'll talk about then is our friend SBUS. Now SBUS again uses a single cable. So using one servo cable, we can plug it into the SBUS output. This is a R710 orange receiver, and then the SBUS signal can go into the flight controller. It's not the same as PPM. It's a completely different implementation of a serial connection that uses one wire. So if you have something that understands SBUS, you can't plug a PPM receiver into it and expect it to work. Originally developed by Fataba, it's a system that I'm not a huge fan of, I'll be honest with you. Um, it works in the same way. Each of the channel positions is sent in sequence down the single wire. It can mean that you actually get more channels out of the receiver. If you have a 18 channel transmitter, but you only have a seven channel receiver, down the SBUS connection, you will get all of the channels because the channels that the receiver hears is limited by the transmitter, not the receiver technology, which can be very useful. And the last thing we'll talk about is on some receivers, there's like a standard and high speed mode for the first six flight channels. So you can have really fast response times. Now the great thing about this is just like PPM, you only have one cable and that makes it the connection a piece of cake. The bad news is, is that if you want to connect it to a servo or if you want to connect it to something like a speed controller, then unfortunately you're going to need a decoder to decode the SBUS signal into PWM that these kind of devices understand. Secondly, some flight controllers need what's called an inverter. The way that the signal comes out of the SBUS channel can be upside down for want of a better explanation and an inverter will actually get it the right way around so the flight controller can understand it. There are less devices that understand SBUS natively. You can get servos and other elements that daisy chain together to actually work on the SBUS system but they tend to be a little bit more expensive and a little bit more specialized.
Last thing I'd comment about this is that because you are daisy chaining the things together, you can think of it like a computer network, is the way I can think of SBUS, is there is a current implication. So the one SBUS wire has to carry enough current to run all of the servos that you're connecting onto the SBUS system. That can present problems and you need to use much heavier gauge wire if you're going to put it into something like a plane with SBUS technology than you would with something like PPM or PWM. Last one we need to talk about then is Spectrum Satellite. So the Spectrum Satellite is something like this. Again this is a little orange um, satellite receiver and it only has three wires on it. It has a um, positive, negative and the signal. And for some flight controllers, they allow you to directly plug this three pin cable onto the flight control board. And it kind of acts like the PPM or the S bus connection in that all of the receiver channels go down the one cable into the flight controller. Really, really clean installation. But because it's only working with Spectrum technology, then you can only use it with Spectrum radios or radios that support uh, the DSM, or DSM2, DSMX style protocols. One of the things you have to be aware of on this though is that you usually have to bind this satellite receiver uh, using a normal transmitter that it's connected to. So for example, if we look on this receiver here, the port is actually on the side that I would plug this into. What you would have to do is actually connect it up bind everything first, make sure that everything was working, then unplug it from the receiver and then plug it into the flight controller. It's an extra little step but one you have to be aware of. So the good stuff in this is piece of cake to set up. Once you've got it bound to your radio, plug it into your flight controller and you're golden. It's not so good is it only is the 2.4 gigahertz technology. So if you want to use a receiver that's using a different frequency to control the model, you can't do that. And also it's using the DSM and DSMX, DSM2 technologies to talk to the flight controller. And there are lots of people out there who aren't big fans of that. So hopefully now you will understand what we've talked about. So let's quickly go through them again. PWM, that's the one where you connect one individual cable into each of the channel outputs on your receiver and each one of those cables carries the signal for that specific channel, elevator, aileron, rudder, auxiliary wand, gear, etc, etc. PPM is a one cable connection that carries each of those signals that you get out of a PWM one after the other in a 20 millisecond frame and that goes up as a packet of information to the flight controller and the flight controller can then read off each of the channel values and set up the model appropriately. SBUS is like PPM but it's not identical. It's the Fataba implementation. It's like a computer network. You cannot plug PWM servos speed controllers and other technology directly into an SBUS system. You need extra bits to do that. But if you want to have a clean installation with Futaba technology, it's a great thing to do. And lastly, there's the Spectrum satellite option, which is one little Spectrum receiver that you bind to your radio and you pop into a special three pin connector onto your flight controller. So hopefully that answers all the questions that you had. If there's something that isn't clear, please pop me a comment below. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.